Cytotoxic will go through the same kind of cloning that the B cell did. Some of those cells become memory T cells. Some of them will become effector cytotoxic cells that will kill this one straight out. See, it's bounding to it, and that kills it. Okay? So just give that a watch if you can. All right, so let's get back here. So we've come a long way. That really is, you know, the a whole rest of this chapter goes into all the words that we've been talking about, but you've seen what you need to see. If you understand how B cells and T cells interact, and you understand how T cells cytotoxic act on their own with an infected cell, then that's it. We just got to put all the words together in our head <laughs> to make it read correctly on the test, right? But you've seen everything you need to see. Okay, so we did a little bit of this last time on the handout. Everybody good with these? How to qualify whether something is natural or artificial. If you're exposed to it naturally in the environment, chicken pox or common cold, whatever, natural exposure. If you're given the virus in a vaccine, that is artificial, artificial exposure. Passive and active is the second part of the statement. If it's active immunity, you produced your own antibodies, right? So getting a vaccine and producing your own antibodies, which is what normally happens, would be what? Artificial, Artificial active immunity. Beautiful. Okay. A baby that's been naturally exposed to the common cold at a nursery, but is still breastfeeding at home, would be what? Natural, Natural passive. passive immunity. Because they're naturally exposed to the antigen, and they were passively given the antibody from the mom. Okay? Because they can't quite make all their antibodies on their own yet. Okay, so y'all got that. So the active and passive terms are whether you produce your antibody on your own or not. The natural and artificial have to do with how you're exposed. Okay. So this goes into the same old deal. The only distinction I make with vaccines with the, with the, the negative side of them is that they mainly target only T2 helpers, not T1 helpers. And they don't pro provide a very strong um, T cell memory, that's all. So they do work, but it'd be silly to argue the fact that vaccines are the, the same thing as the natural exposure, because they're just not. They're just not. They don't offer the exact same type of immunity, and that's, you know, very well documented. But they do work, right? They do help a lot of people. Okay, so we can pass through this. We've done this already. There's our antibody list. We've seen this on the handout already. Which was the most common? IgG, right? I'm not going to give you val I can't go back, sorry. I'm not going to give you the values of the percentages of each of the antibodies. Just know that IgG is the most common. Now here's where we learn about more what antibodies will do. This is their, uh, their plan, is what it's called. P-L-A-N, precipitation, lysis, agglutination, and neutralization. So there's the P, there's the A, and there's the N of the PLAN acronym, you know. The complement fixation gives you the lysis. So that's the L in the PLAN, P-L-A-N. The complement fixation, remember these complements, these little proteins that can attach to the cell surface of a bacteria and punch holes in it, causing water to rush in, and then the cell will do what? First, okay. So these are just the different things that antibodies can offer. They can offer neutralization, which means they basically just mask off the dangerous parts of the antigen. They hide those antigenic determinants like we saw in the beginning. Or they can agglutinate, like in the case of red blood cells. They'll clump things together. Precipitation just makes them more soluble in the blood. And then complement gives you that cell lysis right there. So just know all these as antibody functions, right? Okay. Now we get into the whole, the whole same uh, terminology again. 
Cell mediated immune response will have CD4 and CD8. Which one is CD4? Which T cell? T helpers. T helpers, right? And CD8? Cytotoxic, right? Perfect. So now you got all the data. We can skip through some of this. I didn't mention so much about the suppressor T cells. They're also called regulatory T cells. So just know that they're, they're there. They do have CD8 receptors, right? They just help regulate the other ones. But I'm not going to get into the details of that. Focus on those first two that you've got up top there. We know that the activation has to uh, recognize self and non-self. We've talked about that. This is all things you can read on your own. You've gotten it. This is another slide sequence of showing how these will, how these class ones and class twos will play out. So remember, class one is on all cells, right? So the way to get through these pictures is follow the numbers. Number one. An endogenous antigen is degraded by a protease means that a virus has come inside the cell. They don't show you the virus, but a virus has invaded the cell. Okay? That virus caused a production of an inappropriate protein. So they call it endogenous because the protein was actually produced inside the cell, not outside. Okay, the virus was brought in, but the protein itself, right? which is what makes the virus dangerous. The virus by itself is just there. But what makes the virus dangerous is the proteins that it produces, okay? So the proteins on the inside, they call it endogenous. Those fragments are bound to the rough ER where this class one is produced. Now that class one will be displayed with a peptide, with an antigen uh, bound to it, right? So that's when we get what's going to happen. This is a regular body cell, so what's going to happen? A cytotoxic T cell is going to look at this regular body cell with, a, with an MHC that's kind of screwed up and then mount an attack. Okay, so it's the same old thing that we've said. Now moving on to class two. You guys can read all this. It's everything that we've said before. Class 2 is considered to be exogenous proteins, right? Because we're taking protein antigen fragments from the outside, right, and bringing them in. So if we follow the numbers, where's our number 1? Oh, there we go, okay. We ingest, we endocytose, right, a foreign bacteria from the outside, so that makes it what? exogenous. It's outside, we bring it in, we merge it with a lysosome, lysosome breaks it up, and what does it do? It loads it to a class 2 MHC, which is produced on the ER, and then displays it. Okay. So, you pick, you know, do these pictures help you more, or do the videos help you more? Remember, this is in the cytoplasm of an APC. Right? So what's going to happen? What's this going to uh, interact with? A T helper. And I wish we had time, but this is a great little video right here. It's a very simple animation that shows you the difference between a, um, the two types that we've been talking about. So link on that. It's a great little thing. It takes a little while to load, but it's very effective. So everything that's listed here is what we'll see in the video. It's everything that we've talked about. You see, unfortunately, it takes a lot of words to describe <laughs> what you see in just two minutes on the video. So I promise the questions that I write will be very specific on the same things that we've talked about in class. I'm not going to try to confuse you. As long as you've got your keywords all lined up like this and you've got the general story of what happens, you know, we bring in a protein, we digest it, then we display it, and then we bind to something, right? If you've got that general story, you'll be fine. Look at that mess, man. Wow. <laughs> We're not going to go through that. I just wanted to say, I want you to see it and say, damn. <laughs> this is the T1 helper, uh, T1 memory cell that we don't necessarily get so much in a vaccine.
But isn't that crazy? That was someone's college project uh, for a dissertation, I'm sure. But everything's labeled. It wasn't labeled when I found the picture. It took me a while to label the darn thing because it's very hard to find <laughs> what is going on because uh, you know how smart people they are. They just assume that you know it all so they don't label anything. Well, yeah, that was a daily project to label that little booger. So that's just to help you. That's not on the, on the test. That's just to you know, quench the fire of curiosity you might have. <laughs> so anyway, everything else is um, pretty much what we mentioned here. I think we're toward the end, aren't we? I don't have much on the autoimmune thing. We kind of already know that these are going to be cells that fight themselves, right? We're not recognizing self. We're not recognizing tolerance. Just to have that idea. Um, everyone generally knows what a hypersensitivity is. That's all I'm going to hold you for. I'm not going to get into the specifics of these last slides, I'll be honest with you. I think we've done, we've accomplished everything we need to have. How many more slides we got? Yeah, okay. No. I think we're good. So, watch those videos. I've got another, if you didn't see this, I've got another, a shorter PowerPoint slide set of just the class one, class two information. Let me show you where this is. Do you have the attention sheet, Dr. Uh it's it's around here somewhere. The other um PowerPoint is right here. For the MHC notes. It's just a uh, shorter slide set. How do you get to the YouTube videos again? Yeah. Okay. Right. You just go to the chapter. It's um, up here oh. under Course Home YouTube channel. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. The um, antibody function.